you've all had a fabulous, fabulous week. Um, forgive the herbal tea, but I've got a really sore throat today, so I might have to drink quite a bit of this to make sure that my voice doesn't sort of strangulate halfway through. Um, it is glorious weather here again, which is fantastic. Everything seems so much better in the sunshine. Um, so yeah, I hope you're all really, really well. Um, today's video is going to be... Um, well, it's kind of twofold, so I'm going to do a quick pattern review. Um, I'm also going to do, do a review of the cardigan that I'm wearing. Um, and I am going to talk you through my top five tips for speeding up your sewing. I'm going to start with my pattern review, which is the Needly Q pattern. Ta -da! Um, it's got a couple of different options. Let me show you the line drawings on the back, if you can see that. Um, so it looks like there's two different options for the dress um, with the sleeves. So you can have sleeves, which are slightly sort of um, puff sleeves, or you can have the cold shoulder option. But you can actually drop off that um, little uh, cold shoulder sleeve there, so you could just have it sleeveless which I've seen quite a few versions and they look fab um, and then there's also the skirt version on them which is what I've made because um, I wanted a really really quick project because this was my make when the lovely surf section blogger team came down for our sewing day last month so I wanted something that I knew I would actually manage to sew a large proportion of whilst they were here because we always natter loads and then don't necessarily get quite so much sewing done. So um, yeah, it was great fun. And I pretty much managed to finish the skirt except for all the hand stitching in our sewing day. So that was fab. I'm gonna show you the skirt now. Let's step back. Um, I've used our, let me show you up close so you can see the fabric. Our Marabou Mosaic Cotton Lawn, which has this amazing, let me step back, um, bird print. It's a really large scale print, which is another reason why I stuck to it for a skirt. I'm hoping you can see, ta -da. it's got a high-low hem. Um, I have French seamed the inside, it's got quite a narrow waistband, and it sits quite nicely on my natural waist. So it's ever so slightly um, roomy around there, but I actually don't mind that because it gives me some room to breathe and eat biscuits. Um, and yeah, I really, really love it. It sewed up really quickly. Um, I French seamed the side seams because, sorry, just this. French seamed the side seams because I just thought, because it was such a simple make, um, it'd be nice to have a really nice finish to it. So I'm really pleased with that. And, can you believe this? Considering I don't really like hand sewing, I hand stitched the whole of the waistband and the whole, let me show you the waistband at least, if I can turn that in on itself. The whole of the waistband is hand stitched as is the, um, the hem. And it's quite a long hem. So I actually, and I did it all in one sitting in the evening after um, I'd got home, um, because I wanted to get it done. Um, I actually <laughs> woke up the next day with a pain here where I'd clearly got like repetitive strain injury from um, all the hand sewing. Um, I don't do it very often, but I just thought it's such beautiful fabric, it's such a lovely skirt, and I knew that I was gonna get a lot of wear out of it. So I wanted to make the most of it and make it, you know, with a really, really lovely finish. And the other thing that I did, if I can show you, uh, so I have been wearing it all day guys, which is why it looks a little bit rumpled as well. And I normally this cardigan, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, covers perfectly. It's only because I'm lifting it up to show you, so I don't normally flash my tummy. Um, but can you see these amazing covered buttons? Ta-da! I thought self-cover buttons would be the best way to finish it. Um, because I just thought they looked really, really pretty and they bring out the colours in the fabric. It was such beautiful fabric. Um, however, I faffed around with one of those self-covered button tool things at home and within about five minutes thought, life is too short for this. 
So um, I had a little, little uh, had a little look around and discovered that there are actually button covering services that you can use. So you send off um, a piece of your fabric, you choose which type of buttons you want. Um, I used I think it was I think it's just called buttoncoveringservices.co.uk, but I will check and I will obviously link it down below. Um, obviously they're in the UK. I don't know if they send um, abroad, but I'm sure there are others. Um, wherever you're watching this. Um, yeah, you send off your fabric, you choose your, you send off your form, um, having chosen the type of buttons that you want um, and how many. And I think each of these buttons cost 38 or 40p and then there's £2.50 for posting it back to, to you. So I did that and literally within two days of me um, sending the letter and paying, the buttons were back with me and it was so worth it. I've taken a little um, close up video of them so you can see, I'll pop that in now, and you can see the quality of them is just so good. The finish is really, really nice and there's no way I would have got that even with all of the tools that are um, available. I just don't think that, um, <laughs> I would have made them look as nice as they do. So I'm really, really pleased with them and they finished the skirt perfectly and I am so going to use that service anytime I want to add self-cover buttons. And in fact, I think I've steered away from adding self-cover buttons to things because I've been worried about the finish and not wanting to faff around with them. But now, I'm gonna put self-cover buttons on everything. Um, and just to be 100% clear, um, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. Um, I just thought they're brilliant, so I wanted to include them. I will link them down below. Um, okay, so the next thing I was just going to talk to you about briefly, because um, I had quite a bit of interest on this on Instagram, um, is my cardigan. Let me just rearrange myself so that I'm back in how I would normally wear it. So this is one of the new Lisa Comfort cardigans, uh, jersey knit. So really, really soft. So it's probably covered in fluff because I've been wearing it all day and, and cuddling the cat. Um, I ordered an extra large because I was worried about it coming up a bit too small. Um, but actually I needn't have worried. Um, there's loads of room in this. And actually, I think, and especially in the sleeves, I was worried that the arms might be a little bit tight because sometimes on some favourite patterns, the arms can be quite narrow, but there's loads of room in this. And I think I could have got away with the large. But I quite like it having a bit more room. I like the little buttons. I think they're finished, everything's finished really, really nicely. Um, so, and it just fits really well with my navy dresses and skirts and things so Sorry, I'll just grab some more tea so I really recommend them um, I'm just hoping that she brings out some that are either well, I really want a black one and also some more um, I don't know why my camera's not focusing hoping you can see me there we go um, some more vibrant colours so um, like hot pinks or bright greens they're all pastels and pastels aren't really my thing but um, fingers crossed I have really struggled to find crop cardigans so I think it's a great move um, from Lisa and I, yeah I'm really hoping that um, she brings out some more so now I want to talk to you about my top five tips for speeding up your sewing um, this is something I get asked about a lot obviously we teach a lot of classes um, I obviously run the business and have a very limited amount of sewing time so people do ask me quite regularly how do I sew <laughs> how do I sew um, and quite often I sew quite fast. Um, I don't sew as fast as some people, Amanda, I'm looking at you, um, but when I've got that limited time I do try and make the most of it and when I'm teaching, when any of our teachers are teaching here, we will always show people the full way to do something um, or I don't want to say the right way because there are, as you'll know if you've been sewing for any length of time, there are just different ways to do things, um, not necessarily the right or wrong way. Um, different teachers will teach in different ways. Um, but what we try and teach is that this is the probably full and proper way to do something. 
but if you do or don't do X, Y, and Z, this is the result that you will get. Um, so often people will say, well, that's great, but how can I do it a little bit quicker? Um, and these are my top tips for that. So if you've just started out sewing, I would perhaps concentrate on um, finessing your techniques and learning um, the different ways you can do th things. And then if you're already sort of sewing and just wanting to speed up a little bit, then hopefully these will help you. Tip number one batch cutting so um cutting out can be really tiresome i if i had a penny for the amount of time someone had said to me i wish someone else could just cut out all of my sewing and then i could just sew it up i would be very very rich um cutting out is a completely separate thing to sewing i find and if you do it all in one go so if i've got for example this month there's three projects that i want to sew up i will try and cut those three projects in one go while i'm in the cutting mindset so i'll get all of my pieces out and i will cut them all and then i'll pop them into separate project bags so that they're ready for when i do get the urge to sew um, when we teach our classes I find that if we're doing a full day class we'll often do the pattern alterations and the cutting in the morning and then we'll break for lunch and do the sewing in the afternoon and the amount of people that say how tiring they find the cutting out um, so I think if you can do all of your cutting in one go put it to one side then when you come to the sewing part you feel fresher your mind is um, you know ready to sew and you don't feel kind of bogged down with all of that cutting out that you've had to do um, and it's just easier because your workspace if it's anything like um, mine at home it's only limited space so I have to do all of my cutting out and then move things over to do my sewing so um, do all of your cutting out in one go tip number two relates to um, cutting as well and it's actually to skip the scissors and use a rotary cutter and pattern weights Ooh. so instead of pinning your pattern pieces to your fabric which can take quite a while I use pattern weights we've got um, these ones that we sell which are in the sewers faction designs we've got about five different designs they come in three different sizes um, they're great because instead of having to pin each place you literally pop these on top the weight keeps the um, pattern paper in place and then you use your rotary cutter to cut round and it is so much quicker than scissors um quilters use these quite a lot um, but they're just as good for dressmaking um or just as useful for dressmaking and i would say that nine out of the ten projects that i sew i um use a rotary cutter this is a fiskars rotary cutter um and i find that the 45 mil blade is the best size you can get them bigger and you can get them smaller but for dressmaking the 45 mil blade is big enough so that it doesn't take too long but it's still small enough for you to get around those corners obviously it does mean that you will need a cutting mat and you'll need quite a large cutting mat for dressmaking i will link to um, the ones we use in the studio down below they're by um, a company called anzio and they're the best ones i found because um, one they come in lots of lovely colors so not just forest green which you'll see everywhere and um, they come in like pinks and blues and greens like mint greens um, which are lovely two they're quite um, well priced which is always handy because cutting mats can be really expensive and um, three they come in nice big AO size which is the biggest size that you can get I think um, from my research other than having them cut specifically to size but yeah I find that using a rotary cutter and weights can halve the time it takes me to cut out so if you haven't used one before maybe have a little practice get yourself a small mat um, and a rotary cutter and just see how you get on with it I do find some people just will always prefer scissors but um, the majority of people who go on to use a rotary cutter are converted and it is so much speedier. Tip number three, use less of these 
pins. So um, pinning takes an awful lot of time and um, every time you have to pin a, um, you know, your seams or your two bits of fabric together, um, you're distorting the fabric. So if you notice every time you put a pin through, it will lift up the fabric slightly and move it out of shape. So you're distorting, um, which makes it trickier to sew or trickier to um, cut out, depending on what you're doing. Um, and also it just takes time to put the pin in and take the pin out. Don't sew over your pins. <clears throat> Sorry guys, voice is going again. Um, don't sew over your pins, even if you put your pins in horizontally and sew over them, um, it's still really not good for your machine. And if you do that often enough, um, it can upset the timing on your machine, so just be careful. Um, just use less pins instead. I find, especially when um, people are new to sewing, they use lots and lots of pins because they want to feel like everything is really, really secure. Um, and that's fine, but actually then you have to stop and start all the time to take those pins out, and that can actually make you feel less secure in your sewing anyway. So if you feel like you are at the stage where you could potentially use a few less pins, try it because you'll be amazed at the difference it makes to how quickly you can get through your sewing. Um, if I am sewing a straight seam, I would normally just pop a pin in at the end of the seam so I know that everything is going to stay nice and lined up and then I use my hands and my eyes to control the sewing machine and make sure that everything stays straight and I can do it so much quicker because I haven't got to keep stopping to pull out pins. Um, if I'm setting in say a sleeve, obviously I will need to use um, a lot more pins if I'm setting in a sleeve in the round but if I'm sewing jersey fabric or I'm just setting in a sleeve in the flat I will pop a pin in at either end and a pin in at the middle so that I know um, everything's in the right place and then I will just again use my hands and my eyes to make sure everything um, lines up and this is something that I see as people build their confidence and they use less pins they get faster so if you can be brave and skip the pins do tip number four don't backstitch so you'll hear a lot about back stitching at the beginning and the end of your seam or doing a locking stitch, whatever you would like to call it. Um, this is so that your seams don't come apart and obviously are stronger, um, which is very true and we obviously don't want our seams to come apart. However, you will find that the majority of the seams that you sew will be locked off by another seam. So for example, if you are sewing a skirt, your top seam, the top of your skirt, um, will be normally covered with a waistband, so that line of stitching that you do around there will lock off the top of your side seams. You will also have a hem, so that line of stitching or hand stitching, however you do it, will lock off the bottom of your side seams. Um, if you are doing shoulder seams, you'll normally put a sleeve in or a lining or bias binding, however you finish your seams, and that will um, lock off those seams. So actually, back stitching or locking stitching aren't really necessary on a lot of the seams that you sew and um, I would only do it if I was working with a really loose weave fabric or um, where I wasn't finishing the seam with another line of stitching um, which off the top of my head I can't think of when you sew a line of stitching and you leave it bare perhaps if you're sewing jersey and you didn't want to finish your hems um, but yeah, so very, very rarely do I do a back stitch or a locking stitch. And tip number five is a combined tip about batching again. You'll notice that that definitely uh, makes you quicker. So batch everything um, from your cutting all the way through to your sewing. So when you're sewing, if you're sewing darts, sew all of your darts in one go. If you are sewing just straight side seams, sew them in one go. Um, obviously making sure that you can still construct your garment in the way that you need to. But when you're in that mindset and you're doing darts or, um, for example, the other day I made seven pairs, <laughs> seven pairs of trouser twirls for a class and I did all of the zips in one go because then I was in zip um, insertion uh, mode and it was so much quicker. If I was trying to sew side seams and do the zips um, Separately, it would have taken a lot longer because I would have been trying to switch between the two and obviously have the right feet on my machine. Now, I appreciate that most of the time you'll be sewing one garment, but you can still batch things together. So as I say, do your darts or do your seams and then 
um, you'll find that you're a bit quicker. Then also batch your pressing. So you don't have to get up each time you sew a seam and press it. Sew the seams that you can um, that aren't going to be finished with anything else and then get up and press them. So if I'm sewing a dress, for example, I will do my darts, I will normally do my shoulder seams, I would then do my skirt sides or skirt darts, skirt side seams, etc. And then I would get up and I would press all of those in one go before I put the skirt together, sorry, the skirt and the bodice together. Um, and that just saves time. It's just all those little things that take a minute here, a minute there, um, all add up. And if you want to speed up your service, those little things make a big difference so hopefully there are a few things there that you found useful or you will find useful let me know if you try them let me know if you find them useful and if you've got any other tips for speedy sewing or speeding up your sewing then do leave a comment down below so that other people can give them a try too so just before I go I also want to mention the big summer stitch up which I mentioned briefly in last week's vlog but we have now released all of the details I am so excited, so, 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 so excited. Um, so it's happening on the, it's actually the 14th of July. Um, it's happening at Homegrange Craft Village where we're based. So obviously there'll be things going on up here in satisfaction. Um, and there'll also be things going on in the main courtyard. It's going to be a really, really amazing meetup for sewers in the southeast or people that want to travel to um, where we are, which is in Berkshire in the southeast. Um, we have had loads of tickets that have been registered for already, um, which is amazing. We only announced it a few days ago. Um, and we have got some very exciting things lined up. Um, so as well as just coming along, meeting, chatting to other sewers, we've got lots of other activities activities that are happening on the day too. Um, so yeah, I really, really can't wait for that. And it's not that long away now, I think it's just on two months. So um, I will pop a link to the blog post with all of the info on it and how you can register for tickets. Tickets are absolutely free. We're only asking people to register just so that we've got an idea of numbers. There's gonna be a barbecue and a Pim's bar and things like that. So we need to make sure that we've got enough of everything. Um, just so that we don't run dry and um, obviously so that we've got enough goodies for everybody that's coming along. So yeah, if you are um, in the UK and you can travel to come and see us, then please do because I would love to meet you. Um, and the whole team are really, really excited about it. And obviously if you're coming on your own and you're worried that you won't know anyone, do not worry, please come up and see us. There'll be loads of us here and we are always happy to chat sewing. So yeah, I'll pop all the details for that down below and hopefully we'll see some of you there. Um, but I am going to take my um, sore throat. My tea is pretty much cold now. I'm gonna take my sore throat and go home and edit this and get this up for tomorrow morning because I've left it quite late this week. Um, but I hope you all have a fabulous week. If you've liked the video, please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe and it really, really helps us. So really appreciate it. And I will see you all again next week, guys. Bye.